Oh, look at that. A world record. This, my friends, is one of the coziest racing games I have ever played. Rainy Day Racer. It's only $3.99 on Steam, and I paid under a dollar for it during the summer sale. You may be wondering why I'm covering a game from 2018. I mean, typically I do try to stick to older titles, but this game only has 23 Steam reviews as of writing this script, and I just wanted to get this game more attention because I love it, it's amazing, and um, I think more people should know about it. Alright, let's get to the details. Rainy Day Racer is a simple time attack game. There's three tracks, and each of them has the option to be played in reverse. So that's technically six tracks, I suppose. But there still isn't much here. There's only three vehicles to choose from. A hatchback, a sedan, a van, and uh, each one acts kind of differently, but more on that later. Each track has three laps, three chances to get the fastest time. Completing a race or quitting the round after at least one lap puts your time on the leaderboard. More on that later. After selecting a track, you are greeted to a vibey scene where a woman is chilling in the rain. After some time, or if you press a button, she pulls out a sign to introduce the track and whoever holds the record for the fastest lap. Then the race starts. We get to hear the announcer, which I can only assume is the developer. Three, two, one, go. He also lets you know if you're hitting certain segments of the track faster or slower. These checkpoints make it easier to track your overall time during the race. It makes you feel better when you hit a certain area quicker than you did before. And rage when you don't. I had to refilm a lot of my attempts for this video because I usually hit a wall or a curb or a light pole and immediately restart. I've played this enough to know that one mistake means not coming close to the world record lap times. There is beating the game, so to speak. Once you meet the par time for all six tracks, which is very easy to do, you unlock Shine Mode. It's the same six tracks, but just with no rain. Also, the lovely lady at the beginning is wearing warmer clothes and doesn't look as miserable. <laughs> I think to make it seem different, the developer made the cars go faster in Shine Mode. It's only by like one mile an hour, but explains why the Shine Mode has faster lap times. I prefer the rain just because it's moodier. The game takes place in Scotland, according to the Steam description, and apparently it rains all the time. The openings and the races themselves are just awesome in the setting. Here in the rain, pitter-patter across the windshield is just relaxing. The races either start at night or in the day. As the race progresses, so does the time. Night changes the day, day changes the night. It's actually pretty cool, and um, I don't know, I just really love the atmosphere. However, when I'm grinding out times, I have to listen to something. The atmosphere kind of wears off when you're trying to be ultra competitive, but hey, there's plenty of video games out there, specifically racing ones, with fantastic uh, soundtracks that should put you in the mood to grind out some good times. So that's all the visuals and audio and whatnot. Time for the nitty gritty, the actual driving mechanics. And I'm not entirely sure how to describe these drifting mechanics. The store page says, Arcady, forgiving handling physics with no collision damage and gently railroaded drifting. Railroading is the best way to put it, I suppose, but just watch this little drifting segment. Watch it again. Watch it again. How do you explain what's happening here? It looks like those rides at Disney or Universal or wherever else that has the whole thing on a track, you know, where you're sitting in a car and it kind of like pulls you around. Like, it's not a roller coaster. It's more like a show. So turning, so when the Disney rides turn, it's not smooth, right? It like jerks around. Um... I don't know, that's the best comparison I can make. Initiating the drift might as well be invincibility mode. You will not wreck while drifting. It's almost like activating the drift is what turns the railroad lines on, and you won't come off until the drift has been canceled. Does that make any sense? So you go into a turn, you drift. At this point, you're not going to hit the wall, you're not going to hit anything as long as you're turning left and right with the curves, and you're not going to hit anything. You might slow to a stop, but you definitely not going to wreck until you've come out of the drift. For something so simple and railroaded, it's very difficult to explain in words. So just, you know, watch me drift. You know, it's, it's the only really way to understand how this craziness works. You know what, I'm going to try again. So essentially, when I kick off a drift, I'm no longer concerned about crashing, but more interested 
and making sure I only drift for the amount of time that's needed and not drift any longer so I can keep my speed going. Yeah, I like that. Drifting can be done by either braking, then immediately accelerating into the turns, or turning while in midair, or just turning really sharply. I'm actually not confident on what's the most reliable way, but that's the various methods I've found. Once you race on these few tracks over and over again, you begin to learn which turns react well with which drifting method. Um, that's a benefit to this game, not having a whole lot of tracks, is that you can memorize them more and know where the railroad tracks are and whatnot. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I sound like a crazy person out loud, but believe me, it's great. I, it's fantastic. I guess I should mention you can play this game in third person, but this game is all about being accurate, and I really want to see the turns coming, so um, you're not going to see any of it in this video, really. Though I say that as if I'm that good, I still hit light poles. It absolutely angers me. The amount of restraint to hit the restart button while recording footage was immense. See, I, I've been wanting to just have me doing laps in the background to talk about it so you can kind of see how this... Uh, goes down uh, a lap on each track, so to speak. But, um, man, I, I'm wanting to hit the restart button so many times. Hitting anything but pavement slows your car down just so far. It's like it like halves your speed. And the acceleration's not great on any of the vehicles. So you're not going to get up to that speed to, uh, you know, get any remotely good time. The last thing to discuss about the gameplay itself is the three cars. The hatchback is the slowest and the van is the fastest. The hatchback drifts really easily, and the van takes a lot of effort to actually, like, kick off the drift. The sedan, I don't care. I don't like it. The hatchback is great for learning the game, and most of my fastest times came from it. Since it maintains a low speed, there's only a few places you actually need to drift. With some precision, you can just speed straight through the turns. It's a fun car. Reminds me of those awesome 90s Hondas, and very forgiving. However, if you want the world records, you're going to have to use the van. It's faster by like 10 miles an hour. However, drifting in this thing is like trying to drift in a World War II era tank. It's so hard to turn in general that drifting becomes almost like a prayer. With the hatch, there's turns you can make without drifting. With this new added speed and the van, now you have to drift where you didn't have to before. It adds a completely different strategy uh, to the game that's that kind of extended my playtime a little bit more because the first you know many hours I played of this were in the hatchback and now I'm trying to learn with the van. It's really hard to describe why it's so fun to try to master this very awkward, very unique driving model. It could be the setting, it could be the weird dog related stuff everywhere. Speaking of dogs, the developers, illegal dogs, are just hilarious. Their latest update mentions that their next game is a beat em up and that they're doing pretty well under the bridge that they're currently living under. <laughs> Even the store page descriptions are funny. They are very aware that the two of the tracks are very similar and so they say that the game has like 2.75 tracks or something like that. Everything described seems so down to earth. They're not trying to sell this game as something that it's not or hide its imperfections and it makes me appreciate this game even more. I'm really excited for this beat em up they're mentioning. I'm also curious how they coded this weird drifting. Hey! Illegal dogs. Somehow, if you are seeing this, let's talk. I have some questions, and I'm super stoked about this mysterious next game. I mean, uh, and, you know, I'm not expecting anything, but I, I would love a sneak peek if possible, please. Please? Anyway, I do know exactly why I wanted to master this game. Leaderboards. The leaderboards are kind of what fueled me to play this game for as long as I have and continue to play it. I wanted at least one world record, which is what I briefly showed in the beginning. One more. That's me. I've thought about the idea of changing my Steam name to CD-ROM Fossil, but I always cringe when I see those people with, like, TTV or YT in their username, so I think I'm just going to avoid it for now. Point is, if you see one more on the Ready Day Racer leaderboards, more than likely that's me, especially if it's that picture, because I don't think I'm ever going to change it. With that context, you may notice near my name a sunbun. This is the guy who does my thumbnails, edited a few stream VODs, and made some other sick art. The fact he had faster times than me created this brief rivalry. I wanted to best his times, and he would answer. It really added um, some little bit of headcanon for me, because I've complained about this in other racing games, and the... And I've talked about it on stream. I don't like racing games where the other racers aren't named because then you can't create kind of like a story or rivalry or anything like that. You can't just pretend like you're having some beef with a specific racer. Uh, but here, um, this racer can respond to me. So it, it added a lot more value to the fun of this game. Um, but it, if he wasn't here, at least I would have the other names on the leaderboard and I could try to beat their times. Better yet, you can also summon a ghost. 
and follow that ghost to see how well you're doing. So if you're trying to beat someone's world record, uh, you can spawn their ghost and see if you can keep up with it. Though I don't like this ghost. It makes it harder to see um, when you're racing, but it's cool that it's there. Now, I did say brief rivalry because I really do want to hammer home the fact that there's not a lot here in terms of content. Sunbun took a break, and I'll probably take a break soon, and that's probably just because just, you know, there's only so many times you can around the same track and not get kind of tired. And I know that if it wasn't for Sunbun, and especially if it wasn't for the leaderboards in its entirety, I probably wouldn't be making this video. But I think with the atmosphere and the cool graphics and driving around and just seeing the city and the competition of your friends and strangers is a perfect combination and a mix that made this perfect for me and I think it might be perfect for you because the competitions what kept me around long enough to start noticing minor details in the driving mechanics and appreciating more of the finer little details and stuff you know as said before it really made me want to learn the drifting system so yes I highly recommend this game for the atmosphere experiencing all the tracks at least once in both rain and shine and trying to beat your friends or strangers. It's perfect for the price. It's honestly worth it. You'll get your money out of it. You know, if you wait for a sale, it goes even cheaper, but man, come on. This is honestly a fantastic racing game. I've been in the mood for racing games for a while. I started doing reviews of them, and this just hit a spot. It hit an itch, and I'm happy. Uh, I really, really do enjoy this game. Um, it set the bar really high for when I start looking at other racing games. But yeah, the next game was decided by a poll that I did here on YouTube. And uh, people picked out of the four that I gave them. Tex Murphy, Under a Killing Moon. And I'm excited to show that to you guys. I hope to see you there.